can really mean and does mean military service or any other kind of service. David went to the Naval Academy, and in his plebe year, his first year, freshman year, um, there are a lot of things which the plebes have to do which are simply designed to indoctrinate them into military culture. That's part of the life of, of, the, of a service academy. And I remember vividly asking David about his experience uh, during the first semester of his plebe year at Annapolis. And um, he was very knowledgeable about military trivia. He'd read every Tom Clancy book and knew all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that the plebes had to do every Friday night was to take a military knowledge quiz. And that military knowledge quiz consisted of a hundred multiple choice questions about the most obscure stuff you can imagine. Like, you know, what is the weight of a fully fueled FA-18 when it takes off the deck of a carrier. You know, just ridiculous trivia. And David was good at that stuff. And at the end of the first month of his plebe year, his squad leader, who was in charge of, of his squad uh, and administered these tests, came to him and he said, Hale, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is, you have the highest score in the company on military knowledge, professional knowledge. The bad news is that if everyone in your squad doesn't score at least as well as you or better on next week's quiz, you go back to zero. And in that moment, I think David understood what it was to be a member of a squad. That it was not about himself and his own achievement, but about the success of his squad mates and those around him. Good morning. I, uh, I have a friend with whom I went to college with. His name was uh, Nick. And again, we weren't the closest of friends, but you know, we hung out, played basketball, did a whole bunch of things. And after college, uh, he enlisted in the Army. And um, you know, really didn't speak to each other throughout the years, but you know, um, kept tabs on him. I, uh, I saw a message on Facebook about March of this year, right, at the end of March. And it said, um, Nick, get well soon. It was from someone else. And so I uh, messaged Nick's best friend um, and said, hey, what's going on? What happened to Nick? And I'd gotten no reply. Uh, it was on September 11th of this year that I, I woke up and found a message on Facebook to which Nick wrote, to which I, I'll read to you now. Thank you to all for your kind words and thoughts. Bottom line, without you, I wouldn't be the man I am today. As far as rehab is going, um, I'm still going at it as hard as I can. I get a lot of questions from people, as well as stories from those of you who know other amputees. Now that hit me. All are welcomed and are appreciated, but just to be clear, no amputee is the same. Literally, every injury brings its own challenges to concur, especially when it comes to above knee and below knee amputation. Completely different injuries. The length of the residual limb is also a huge factor. The amount of muscle and tissue remaining, yet another, just to name a few. As far as me specifically, almost my entire leg is gone. I have barely just enough to be able to hold a prosthetic, something I am so grateful for. That hit me. I no longer have a hamstring at all. Just about my entire quad is gone, and my adductors and abductors are attached in different places. Basically, the little muscle I have remaining has to work in a manner in the capacity that they have never had to before. Thanks to being 6'5", my, <laughs> my prosthetic limb is long as hell. <laughs> so in order to operate it, my muscle strength needs to be through the roof, something I work on every day. So what's the point here? Besides just some general info to all of you who are invested and care about my progress, but to also point out, 
that there's really no uh, s- there's really no way to set forth an accurate timeline when things happen, how long it'll be here, et cetera. And he's talking about when he's in the hospital. If this is coming across as whining, then you clearly don't know me very well. Every day I see guys who have much more difficult road ahead of them, double, triple, even quadruple amputees, guys with severe tra- traumatic brain injuries. A constant reminder that what I'm dealing with is nothing more than a flesh wound. I will beat this. I will return to doing my job. I will continue to compete in my passion, which is mixed martial arts. I will always be someone my family, friends, teammates, and nation can call on, no matter the sacrifice or the cost. I hold so much love and appreciation for all of you. Like I said, without you, I wouldn't be here. To me, after reading that, I I still knew exactly what happened to him, but didn't know exactly how it happened to him. And so I looked further on his post, and earlier that morning, he sent just a little blip, another little blip, which I'll read again, which is short. Twelve years ago today, our nation was blindsided. Six months ago today, my team and I were blindsided. Enjoy your drive through breakfast, your nice truck, your walk with your dog, your gym, your home, your children. There are those out there now and forever who will gladly die for you and for your freedom. Days like today hold a special place in our hearts and minds, and rightfully so. If you know a serviceman or woman, current or past, thank them for the lifestyle he or she has fought for, for you to enjoy. We will never forget. A reading from the Gettysburg Address, 